Yo, Elliot, I hope you're doing well. I'm 24 years old, about to be 25, and live in a joint family structure. I help pay mortgage as well as the groceries, bills, and other expenses. I've been providing help and helping out since I was 19. For work, I have two jobs, uh, an IT job, and, uh, and I help people land jobs, trade stocks, and make content for men on YouTube. Very cool. I work so much because deep inside, I know what I lack, which is my queen. I've been on semen retention for almost a year and have been celibate intentionally for five. I want a religious girl who's going to provide that education for my children and help me get closer to God, as well as I'm very warrior personality-like and want to build an empire in my business. My question might be weird. I've been, I've been courting girls for a couple of years now at this point, and not one single girl would I consider a genuine prospect. My parents offered me a few times to help me find a girl back home because they're actually raised to be wives and have way more loyalty than Western girls. When I went celibate five years ago, I did it with the intention that I wanted my wife to become someone special. And in order for that to happen, I had to become pure myself. I go so far as saying that I really want a soulmate. Do you think it's impractical for me to want a soulmate? Do you think it's a good idea to get a girl from back home whom worst case scenario, if we couldn't have a deep love, she'd know her duty? Would appreciate your thoughts. So this is a great question, man. And I'm going to jump in here and start with this. First of all, I, I'm not so sure there's such thing as a soulmate, right? And I'm not so sure falling in love is so important either, right? I know this sounds crazy, but you got to remember that most of these concepts come to us from Disney, right? The media and the movies, and the world has convinced us that we need to fall in love. We need to have this emotional melting and this sense that you and I are the only ones for each other and you're my soulmate. And it's all this ushy gushy feely BS, in my opinion. My kids and I started watching movies uh, over Christmas, right? We never watch movies together, my wife and I, because we don't watch movies, we read. And so we haven't watched movies with our kids, but since moving out here and kind of not really having the internet and stuff like that, it's very limited. Uh, I started buying DVDs on Amazon, right? And I remember back in the day, DVDs were like, you know, I, you would rent them from, or VHSs, I would rent them from Blockbuster for like $12 uh, to like for two days. And I'm finding the, these old DVDs for like three bucks on, on Amazon. So I bought one called The Princess Bride. It was a movie that my wife and I used to love, love watching. It's sort of a spoofy movie. It's a, it's a goofy movie. But the whole movie is about true love, right? And Wesley and Buttercup, true love. And we're, my kids are giggling at it because it's silly that the, the true love that they think that they have is silly. And the fact is that a lot of people run around acting like Wesley and Buttercup thinking that they have a true love. And I'm going to go so far as to say that love has nothing to do uh, with, let, all right, let me back up. Let me not be so harsh. The way we think love is supposed to work has been completely skewed. The word, word actually, love actually means willing the good of another, right? Willing the good of another. I will the good of my wife and she loves, she wills the good of, for me. And so we love each other in that way. But Emotions sometimes are fickle. And so this whole idea that we always need to be or need to find someone who gives us the ushy gushy goody sweet feelings all the time is a part of the reason why relationships don't work these days, right? This whole idea that people fall out of love is just as silly as falling in love because what they're expecting is to have ushy gushy good feelings. There's nothing wrong with having good feelings towards someone. There's nothing wrong with being physically and emotionally attracted to someone, but the, but the weight of the relationship cannot rest on that. And we've got to get this out of our head. This is a Western conception. I'm not exactly sure where you're from, but out here where we've been manipulated by the media for the past 70 years, we have an entire three generations of people who think that 
love and falling in love and sex and good feelings uh, is what relationships are supposed to begin and stand on. And it's completely false. And all you have to do is look at the fruits of that position. If that's the paradigm from which we've been operating over the past 60 years and over the past 60 years, divorce has skyrocketed, right? People are getting married less. There is, the family has completely been destroyed. And a big part of it is because we have been taught that we need to have emotional love. Emotional love is not, emotional love is subservient to, it is less potent, less important than logical love, logical love. And what is logical love? Logical love is of the will. Like I said, it's willing the good of another. Logical love is getting out of your feelings and doing what is right for the person that you're willing the good for. So it's kind of like a, just an overview and just something that I wanted to throw out there because I, I think we've really lost ourselves as a culture, but particularly as men, when we think that we need to feel love and we need to fall in love and that there's a soulmate out there for you. Your soulmate is who you decide is going to be your soulmate, right? Your soulmate is the person that you logically decide and work towards making your soulmate. My wife and I are complete opposites, right? We have nothing in common, quite frankly, right? Uh, even when we were young, we are so different, but we both will the good of each other. We both are logically in love with each other. We both know exactly what we want, where we're going and how we're going to do it. And we have meetings about it. We talk about it. We treat our relationship in many regards, not all regards. We do have emotional love. We do have physical love. But in many regards, we treat our relationship like a business, right? We act in a way that is logical about the decisions that we're going to make. We think about the future and longevity of our relationship. We think not just about our children, but we think about our children's children. And we also consider our posterity. How is the decisions that we're making, the life that we're living and the things that we're doing going to help my parents, right? So we're thinking genera generationally. We're thinking big picture. We're thinking like an entrepreneur, right? Like people spend a lot of time thinking and planning their businesses but they don't do that for their relationships. They don't do that for their families. They don't do that for their husband and wife, their marriage. Because why? Well, because we've been taught, well, you got to be smart if you're going to be in business. You got to be logical if you're going to be in business. You got to make the right decisions and you got to do the right thing and you got to think far ahead and you got to set goals. All this, this is good. This is right. This is true. But it's not limited just to your business. It's not limited just to your career is not limited just to your schooling. You got to take that same attitude towards your wife, your, your future wife, your future husband, your business partner in life. You got to be cool. You got to be collected. You got to be logical. You got to think long term. So a lot of times what happens is I'm talking from a man's perspective, right? I can't say so much for women, although I have my opinions, but let me speak for men. A lot of times we end up getting into relationships, not you, Mo, because I know you're being celibate for a good reason, but we get into these relationships because we lust for the other. And then we lust for the other and then we fall into sex with the other. And through that first sp spring of emotion, and then the entanglement of physical feeling, right? So we have the emotional feeling and then the physical feeling, all logic gets thrown out the window. This is why I see so many guys with bad wives. I'm like, what were you thinking when you married her? Oh man, she's so hot and the sex is so good. That's, that's cheap, that's easy. That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't do anything. That's not of true value. That's of fleeting value. You know how I know? Because she going to get old. She going to get old and you're going to get old too. And guess what? When you get old, you stop having sex. There's a certain point where you should stop having sex. I, when you, I've said to you guys many times that if you want to know that if you are truly 
to be with a woman and she's truly to be with you, stop having sex. You know why? Because at some point the sex is going to stop. So if you're just romping in the bed with her now and thinking that, oh, things are all hunky dory, things are going to be great. You just wait. You just wait till there's a little bit of a break in that and see how quickly the tension starts to rise and the confusion starts to set in. And it's like, who is this person, right? So we have to, we have to temper the emotion. We have to temper the physical attraction. And you're doing a great job at that. I'm not speaking to you particularly. I'm just giving a general overview here so that what I'm, I'm giving context for what I'm about to say to you. That being said, right? Soulmate stuff, garbage. Falling in love, garbage. Falling out of love, just as dumb as falling in love. Emotional love, physical love, all very superficial. Logical love, willful love. Love that is calculated. As crazy as that, doesn't that sound crazy? How could you have calculated love? But that's the love that Jesus teaches us, right? Right now I'm teaching, we're going through uh, the Beatitudes, right? I'm teaching, when we're doing Bible study with my kids. And we're going through the Beatitudes, right? So Jesus teaches us how to love. And he says all kinds of crazy things like, love your enemy. Well, how is that, that this man is my enemy? And I feel like I want to destroy my enemy. But Jesus is saying, hey, calm your emotions down. Stop being so emotional. Stop being effeminate. Stop being a beta male and letting your emotions and anger control you. What Jesus is saying is even if that person is your enemy, still it is righteous to will the good of that person. And we'd watch the whole video about it. And it's not easy when nothing Christ calls us to is easy. It's not easy to, he says, that if somebody is going to uh, take your, take, steal something from you, right? Take your cloak. He said, give them your coat too, right? Wild stuff. And we've had to sort of unpack that to understand it because it can be taken out of context too, to think that you should just let yourself be walked all over. But that's not it. What he's saying is be calculated, be logical, be willful in your love, not emotional. Now, now that we kind of just got that out of the way, right? And, it's, and, and I'm, I don't make any, I'm not so foolish as to think that that's not going to come up and sneak up and bite us in our butt again, because it's there. It's a part of our fallen nature. We're going to fall for that. That's why Disney gives us these lies. So that as children, we're, 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 we're raised in that lie so that we grow up and we end up being grown men thinking that we need to fall in love and have soulmates, right? It's not the way it works. And you know, part of the reason why, you know, it doesn't work and you know, I'm just throwing these things out there because they're ideas that are worth considering. I, wa I read an article recently about uh, marriage and who has the best marriages? Which cultures have the best marriages? Who lasts longest in marriage? And it asserted that the Indians, Indian, Indian people get married and don't divorce. Their, div their divorce rate was like, or our divorce rate in the West and maybe other, other cultures was like 10 times higher than Indians. Indians are generally, most of the time, they're Hindu. What do Hindu people do? And I don't know if this is the practice. I mean, India is becoming overrun by feminists now too. I have a lot of Indian fans and friends and students that are telling me like, why wow, it's, it's getting crazy. We're becoming Westernized over there. But, but traditionally, Indian marriages were arranged. Why is an arranged marriage make sense, right? Now, I'm reading a really good book called, um, it's about courting. It's called Her Hand in Marriage um, by Doug Wilson. And he's talking about biblical courtship because I'm learning all this stuff because I'm really excited to learn this stuff because I got daughters and I got to figure out how I'm going to get them married to righteous men. But anyway, traditionally speaking, even in the West, but I'm talking about Indians because they still practice this, the father had to be intimately involved with the relationship that he's allowing his daughter or the man that he's allowing his daughter to be with. Or better yet, I'll put it this way, that any young man that wants to court a man's daughter comes to him first. You want to date my daughter, right? Date. You want to consider my daughter for marriage. You don't go to her. You see her, you recognize her, maybe I'll talk a little bit and you realize, okay, I think this woman might be worthy of 
her hand in marriage. She may be worthy of becoming a wife. Let me talk to her father. The father is the head of the family. The father is logic. The father uses logic. The mother is allowed to be more emotional because that's how love is passed from mommy to child, emotional love. But in our world where we have no dads, most of us are addicted to mommy love and then we love like mommy love, right? That's why everything I'm saying about, about emotional love comes so, it come, it's in us, right? It's in us because that's the mommy love, that's mama love. Daddy love is logical love. And daddy love knows, okay, well, my daughter and this young man look like a good match. I, and of course, he's got to, he has to vet this young man. The father vets the young man and says, all right, let's, uh, let's have a couple conversations, you and I, let's figure some things out. I want to know where you came from, what your plans are, what you're doing. And then he says, you know what? I think, I think you might be a good fit for my daughter. And obviously my daughter is smitten by you, right? I don't, she doesn't need to think logically. The daughter doesn't need to think logically. In fact, they usually don't. She needs to, of course, be attracted to this man, but then the father steps in as the head, as the authority, that, the intermediary that says, okay, hold on. I know you, you like the way he looks and maybe he's got some swag, whatever. And I know you're looking at my daughter and drooling or whatever, right? Or maybe you're, you, well, it wouldn't even be that. It has to go beyond that. You're considering her for marriage. And the father as the intermediary then decides whether or not this is a, I'm gonna bless this union or not. How many, how many failed marriages would have been saved if the daughter had a strong father that stepped in and said, whoa, 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 wait a second. I know you guys, okay, you're attracted to each other, but this is not going to work for a number of reasons, right? Maybe the girl isn't ready, right? Right, I have, I have daughters. I will know, and I do know if my daughter's ready or not, right? Just because she can have sex doesn't mean she should. Just because she could fall in love and go on this roller coaster of emotions with some random boy doesn't mean she should. And if I love my daughter, I have to step in and say, whoa, 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 wait a second. Hold on, slow down. I don't think this is a good idea. Not because I want to be uh, a, a slave owner of you, but because I have your best interest in mind. You're going to make my grandchildren with this. This is what fathers don't think about any longer. I don't know why parents don't think about this. My, I'm, my grandchildren, so I'm being a little selfish here. My grandchildren are going to be born of this union. So I got to think whether or not is my, is, are my future, is the, my legacy of our name going to be worth this union? These are things that fathers should think about. And I want to come back full circle to you, dude, because it's such a good question that I got so many different angles that I want to approach this from. I like that you have been celibate, right? You've chosen to be celibate, right? That means you're preparing yourself to be a husband. That's so noble, right? If I'm a dad and, and, and I have my daughters and a young man who is preparing himself for marriage, he's prepared himself to be a husband, He's thinking, acting, behaving, making decisions that prepare him to be a good husband to my daughter. Wow, open, welcome you with open arms. With some random kid from Starbucks or some frat boy at college that I know nothing about, right? Who's been riding the, fem the male version of the cock carousel for the past five years. What a, I don't, this is gonna be my new son-in-law? Anyway, I'm going to stop ranting here and get back to you. <laughs> you say that your parents are willing to take you back home. Now, first of all, that's a really good thing. I like the idea of going home. I, we've ventured so far in so many regards, both ideologically and physically in our world that everybody's freaking lost. Going home. This is going to sound strange coming from a mixed man, an American man, right? My, my great-grandfather was European. He was an Englishman. He was a pretty arrogant Englishman. I heard he used to ride a horse into the store. He was kind of a, he was a badass. He was a king. He came to Central America and shacked up with a 
with a black lady, with a with an African lady, right? And that's how I got to be who I am, and you know, so on and so forth. So it sounds strange coming from a guy like me, but I see the value in ethnocentrism. I see the value in sticking with your own kind. I see the value of going back home and finding a wholesome girl that was raised the way your parents were raised, with the values your parents raised you with. I don't know where you're where you actually are coming from when you say uh, you know you want to go back home. You might go back home, but I guarantee you that there's a lot of beautiful women back home. I guarantee you there's a lot of beautiful women back in your country, and not only are they beautiful women, but raised in the way of righteousness, raised with traditional values, as you say. You say here, my parents offered me a few times to help me find a girl back home. Who, why would you want to go anywhere else but home? Well, you're living in Babylon right now over here in, in America or Canada or somewhere in the West. The West has fallen. The West has been usurped by Satan. He's sitting on the throne of the West. I love America. I love being a Western man. But I tell you, we're on, the, we're on a slippery slope downhill. It ain't going well. And feminism is the, is the demon of the day. These women, I don't blame them because they were born into this, but they know nothing but feminism. They don't know any other way. And it's hard to teach them any other way. I, I don't know how my wife, I think my wife learned by watching my mom. My mom is a, is a good traditional woman. And I think my wife, when I, she was a kid and we we're dating, she was watching my mom and realized, oh, if I want a marriage to work with this man, I, I, can, I should take after this woman. If she took after, if Colleen took after her mom, we would be a long time divorced. She was a flower power hippie child, right? Doing drugs and riding the cock carousel at uh, Woodstock, right? We've been, we've been destroyed. Women have been destroyed. Men have been destroyed. You don't want to go pick in here if you can pick somewhere else, especially back home. You go on to say, back home, they're actually raised to be wives and have way more loyalty than Western girls. What else would you want? Someone who's raised to be a wife, and loyal. They're raised to be loyal wives. Our women aren't raised to be loyal wives. They're raised to be strong, independent women. They're raised to be misandrists. There's a, there's a deep-seated envy. Freud used to call it penis envy. There's an envy and there's a hatred that lurks in Western women's hearts that's stimulated by the quote unquote, empowering stuff they hear on the radio and on the TV. You got like, uh, who, who's Jay-Z's wife name again? Beyonce, right? Ladies, leave your man at home. Guys at the club are bumping, bumping, right? She's telling you, she's telling women, and women will sing this song, ladies, leave your man at home. And this is like music that people dance to. You see guys dance to this shit too. I want to slap them. This is the kind of brainwashing that our women have. Ladies, leave your man at home. Back at your home, women are taught, ladies, keep your ass at home. <laughs> ladies, keep your ass at home. Cook something, make babies, and keep your house bumping, bumping. Right? I mean, that's, that's to me, I, it's not even my opinion. That's what makes a good family work. So you ask me, do you think it's a good idea to get a girl from back home? Worst case scenario, if we couldn't have a deep love, she would know her duty. You will have a deep love with her if y'all choose to have a deep love. How about that? Because what you're hoping for is an accidental love. This is what people, this is, this is love in America, accidental love. Accidental love is garbage love, is fake love, is Disney love, and that's why it don't work. Hindus, they don't have accidental love, <laughs> right? And obviously you, you say you're Muslim. If, if that's the tradition that you're given in marriage, let me put, you, put it this way. Even in the West, that was a tradition. Because if you read the Bible, it says that men marry and women are given in marriage, right? If you read about the days of Noah and then Jesus re recalls the days of Noah, he says they were marrying and giving in marriage. What does marrying and giving in marriage mean? Means that a woman was given to a man. Well, if a woman's given to a husband, who's giving her? A father. We don't have fathers here. We don't have fathers. These girls don't have fathers. They have a man at home that 
was a sperm donor, and maybe he's not even home, but she will most likely have no idea what a real home and a real man is supposed to be like. So you say, if we couldn't have deep love, at least she'll know her duty. Let me, let me, let me say this, man. Even if you don't have emotional love for someone right away, but if they know their role, they play their part and they serve you well, you can't help but fall in love with them. Because that's a, that's a, that kind of love is earned, right? Falling in love is not earned. Nobody, there's no earning in falling in love. There's stupidity. That's why they call it falling. When you fall, what happened? You slip. People who are falling in love are slipping. You don't want to fall. You want to stand on your feet in love. You want to stand on your feet and look eye to eye. You don't want to just bump into somebody and fall. When you stand eye to eye with someone and you serve each other rightly, you know each other's role and you play your part and you serve her and she respects you, both learn to love each other. I know that goes counter to Hollywood. I get it. Hollywood, in Hollywood, it'd be like, oh, the parents are standing in the way. And this is basically what it is. The father's standing in a way, in the way of true love. There would be true love, but the father, the, the harsh, hard, mean, unloving father is standing in our way. No, he's using his head and catching you from this fall you're about to make. Anyway. So obviously, you know that this is a topic that's very hot to me. <laughs> I'm even reading books about it. I've got a bunch of books here I haven't even tapped into right now. I'm looking at one that's called, um, they're all about courting. But I got to learn this stuff. I'm, gonna learn, I'm learning it for you guys so I can talk to you guys about this stuff. But also because I have my own children. Am I going to make the right decision? Am I going to do the right thing? I don't know. I'm trying my best. But the fact is, we got to go back to what worked in the West. We gotta go back to what's working in cultures that marriage works. Arranged marriage works. I know, it's, I know it sounds weird and I know that there are those who, res who resist it. And I know Disney has been you know, convincing us that those cultures that do that, the father's a bad guy. I think about you know, these various movies, I think like Mulan is one of them or something, I don't know. But these movies where like they depict these cultures where uh, the father, uh, chooses and like, and there's an arranged marriage that somehow that that's archaic and backwards. No, that's actually progressive. That actually is so that your culture could progress. That's actually so marriage and family works. What's degressive, what doesn't work, what's degenerate as opposed to generate, right? Generate generations, right? It's generative to have arranged marriage or at least to have courtship and the father's um, permission. Right? How many of you guys ask for permission to your wife's father? That's a very rare thing right now. I know I wasn't all about it when I married Colleen because I was a young beta male fool. I called him on the phone and said, hey, uh, you know, it'd be all right if I married you. After I'd been dating her and having sex with her for the past 10 years, right? It's like, oh, uh, and so of course he was like, oh, yeah, I guess. I mean, it would be the right thing to do after you have been boning my daughter for the past 10 years, right? It's just practically living in your home. Like you are married. So I don't say this stuff like I got it all together or like I did everything right. Only by the grace of God am I am where I am right now so I can say the things that I can say. I didn't earn this. <laughs> I'm a fool too. But in retrospect, I can see my mistakes. I can learn the right way. I can share it with you guys. I can do my best for move on, moving on from here, dude. So that's it. You want to know my thoughts? Those are my thoughts. I'm done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.